On this episode of What's Going On With Shipping, we go nonstop from Shanghai to Montreal on board the MV Happy Rover. Hi, I'm your host, Sal McCagliano. I'm the chair of the Department of History, Criminal Justice, and Political Science here at Campbell University, a former merchant mariner and an instructor in maritime history, maritime industry policy, and maritime whatever. I can't even think of security. Uh, today, this is a special request video that's coming out because of something I just saw on Twitter and a good friend of mine, Charlie Brown, uh, said that he is waiting for this video. So who am I to deny Charlie a, a video? So let's get right into this story about a vessel that was chartered to go directly from the port of Shanghai via the Panama Canal to Montreal, Canada. We're finding innovative ways to get around this supply crisis. So this is the tweet I got from uh, Charlie Brown uh, just 28 minutes ago. Uh, now just waiting for McCogland OS to discuss details on what's going on in shipping in the video below. So the issue is this one from our buddies at Marine Traffic, uh, Giorgios and, and his crew posted this uh, earlier today. And I think it's a really interesting story. So on November 14th, Montreal Port welcomed its first direct service from China with no med stopover. It's good news for the supply chain as a nonstop link between Asia and Montreal. And if you look at this thread here, he's got some great information on here. And here's why. Montreal Port, the largest in eastern Canada, is connected to more than 140 countries. 30% of the port's volume of goods handles come from Asia and will no longer need transshipment in the Mediterranean. So many of the vessels were coming into Montreal via the Mediterranean. We'll talk about that in a second. The vessel itself, the Happy Rover, is a 24-year-old heavy lift carrier R-type and is currently at Thunder Bay, port in Canada. She's actually up on Lake Superior. Flagged in the Netherlands, 138 meters, roughly about 450 feet, uh, built in 1997. So a couple of stories came out on this. This is in Sea Trade. Maritime News has this story, but I want to go to this one right here. This one I, I like a little bit better. This is at Port Technology. Number one, here's an uh, image of the vessel. So she is a heavy lift vessel. And again, this is a very common type that's being used right now by companies like Amazon, by Walmart. These, uh, she is rated at just over a thousand TEU. So not a very big ship, again, just 450 feet. But one of the things that she has is you'll see right here, her own cranes that can be used, uh, not necessarily needed here because you'll see some container cranes right there being used. You'll see the container stackers over here. So she can be chartered to load these containers, a thousand TUs. Now, normally this is not a profitable route. Let's be clear about this. this. You would never do this unless the supply chain crisis is going on right now. Normally you would offload these boxes on a West Coast port, Vancouver, Seattle, Tacoma, Oakland, LA, Long Beach, and then rail them across. Now this first one, first of all, let's say, this is such an advantageous charter right now because of what's going on in Vancouver, because of the closing of the railways there, because of the, the, the rains that hit and the flooding at the uh, Fraser River Valley. We know that the Canadian National, Canadian Pacific Rail Lines have been cut and interdicted. One of them is reopened, but very limited service. And even the highways between Kamloops and Vancouver have opened but closed again. Uh, and then they just had an accident on it. So we're not getting movement out of Vancouver like we should be. Two quick stories here by Freight Waves. I'll include in the show notes. This one from November 29th, talking about the queue for at least 50 vessels. This is from November 29th, so a few days ago. And then we're in the middle of a uh, truck driver strike looming with Vancouver. And this story out yesterday talks about that the strike was averted as the union reaches a deal with the second carrier. All this means that the arrival of this vessel in Montreal was very well timed because of the looming truck strike, because of the severing of the highways and the interdiction of the rail line. These cargoes can get right into the heartland of Ontario in, in Canada very quickly. So a thousand TEUs, I don't know how many boxes are actually on board. These are 40 footers you can see right here. So, you know, probably in the range of 300 to 500 uh, FEUs, maybe on board, uh, not exactly sure who charted. If you go into the story here, she was chartered by the freight forwarder Fract FWO. The Happy Rover docked on 14 November at the Racine terminal of the Montreal Gateways Terminal Partnership. Uh, 
the port of Montreal accounts for 30% of cargo volumes from Asia. So 30% of its cargo comes from Asia, but usually transshipped through the Mediterranean. So this is unique, this idea. And you see the quote right here, the first direct shipping line without transshipment between Asia and the port of Montreal demonstrates the fluidity of trade and the avail availability of our facilities in Montreal, said Guillaume Brossard, vice president of growth and development at the Montreal Port Authority. This arrival, of course, is, is, is a huge event because now you're having vessels coming direct. Go back to this uh, 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 chart right here. Let's go back up here to this image. I think it's uh, actually, I had it up here. Here we go. If you look at this image, this voyage follows the Great Circle route out of Shanghai through the Tsushima Straits between uh, Honshu and Hokkaido up near the Aleutians back down. She does stop in Mexico, probably for fuel, but un unknown if it's a cargo movement, gets in the Panama, goes through the Panama Canal. It's not clear how long it took her to get through the Panama Canal to get out there and then out of Panama between the Windward Passage between Cuba and Hispaniola, and then up around Nova Scotia into the Gulf of St. Lawrence, down the St. Lawrence Seaway. I've actually sailed to Montreal before. It's a really beautiful passage down the St. Lawrence and into the port. Now, again, she's not a huge vessel. If we look at her here, I think I got her. Yep. Here she is right here. She's a heavy lift, very characteristic vessel, a heavy lift. Uh, you'll see very small island back, two cranes on board offset, uh, hers are offset to starboard. Uh, go through, some, here's some pictures. Designed to carry, these vessels are designed to carry oversized cargo, really stuff that doesn't fit normally into container ships. So no telling what she has carried uh, before in the past, barges, yachts, uh, drilling equipment. Uh, here you see some oversized equipment uh, on top of her being loaded. Uh, just really a, a jack of all trade vessels, these heavy lifts. She's registered in the Netherlands for big lift and obviously just a very opportune uh, 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 lift here for the vessel you'll see her right here she's got one of those free drop lifeboats which are terrifying can i be clear absolutely terrifying to go in they look cool but not a ride i recommend for anyone ever to do just pull up some videos and free fall lifeboats and you'll see what i mean here she is carrying some uh, vessels it looks like at the time just again I, I would argue this is a really innovative concept being done you'll notice here at the end of the story the port of montreal welcomed the largest container ship ever to visit the saint lawrence in July of 2021, the 6,700 TEU MSC Melissa, I pulled her up too in, in this story. I think I got her. There, there she is. That's her right there coming into uh, uh, or, or the MSC Melissa. You can see a much bigger vessel. Again, we were talking about the Happy Rover carrying 1,000 TEU. You can see right here how much larger MSC Melissa is. She is right now the Happy Rover in Sturge, uh, up here in uh, Thunder Bay, up in Lake Superior, uh, probably coming in for an opportune load, probably going to load some uh, uh, cargo here to come out. Who knows? Probably grain, I'll imagine, uh, in bags, probably uh, really an opportune time for her to be there because of the backlog out of Vancouver. She probably picked up this charter and came through the Great Lakes to lift this up and head out. I want to talk a little bit about the mechanisms of going through the Great Lakes, because this is an interesting, obviously, body of water. Number one, this is really late in the season to be going up on the Great Lakes in December, but we haven't had an icing of the Great Lakes yet. Uh, typically, late November, early December, you see things shut down on the Great Lakes, but because it's being so warm right now, we see the Great Lakes open. So here's the map on the Great Lakes right here. And when you come into Montreal, yeah. so you come in here, here's Quebec, here's Montreal a little further down. And then to get from Montreal up onto Lake Ontario and then from Lake Ontario onto Lake Erie and then from Huron onto Lake Superior, you have to go through a series of locks. The Great Lakes are higher than sea level. They're, they're much higher actually than sea level. They're quite a bit up there. And the Great Lakes has constraints on the size of vessel. You can't bring huge vessels, for example, the size of uh, MSC Melissa up onto the Great Lakes. And this, here we go, has the diagram here showing you the locks going through, the series of locks that you have to step on. So if you come out of Montreal 
getting up onto Lake Erie and then from Erie up onto, uh, excuse me, from, from Ontario up onto Lake Erie, you got to go through the Welland Canal. That is a major step. If you understand the geography right here, this you'll see eight to 15 locks right here to go from Ontario up onto Lake Erie. That's because of Niagara Falls. So you have this huge precipice drop right there. And so the Welland Canal allows you to get up onto Lake Erie. And then from Erie, you can get onto Huron. And then from Huron, you got to go either into Michigan or if you go up into Lake Superior, which is the biggest of the Great Lakes, you got to go through the, the Sioux Locks. And the Sioux Locks are huge. They're, they're designed for these massive ore carriers. So the Sioux Locks are, are tremendous in size. The ore carriers that come out of Duluth and Northern uh, Canada, all the way to Ohio, for example. The locks here, the Welland Canal locks are not as big. And that's why you have limited size vessels that can really go up in here. And it's a great description here of the canal system. This is the, the story here of the MSC, uh, uh, Melissa that came in, uh, a really interesting one that we saw develop. So I think the guys at Marine Traffic did a great job highlighting this story. It's a really interesting story. Do I expect to see routine vessels coming from China up onto the Great Lakes? Probably not for, for a couple of reasons. Number one, this, this is really a long voyage, a precipitously long voyage. Understand you, you've got to sail all the way across the Pacific. You've got to pay a Panama Canal toll, which is going to be cost price, be pricey, probably around for a size vessel like this, probably about $100,000. Uh, get her up long sea voyage down the St. Lawrence, you got to pay for the locks to go through a whole series of locks to get up onto the Great Lakes. And then you're on the Great Lakes. And understand one of the big things about going on the Great Lakes, particularly right now, is vessels have to have these water treatment systems. Now, these are going to be mandated on all vessels by 2024, but you have to have a water treatment system. You can't just pump water off the vessel into the Great Lakes because it's a protected environment. You don't want the spread of invasive species. Obviously, even though Happy Rover is an older vessel, 24 years old, she must meet those requirements on board. So she can pick up a load anywhere along the Great Lakes, uh, whether in Canada or along the American side to take out from them. Uh, she cannot go from port to port in the United States moving goods because of restrictions from the Jones Act, but she can easily go in and pick up a load of iron ore or grain and do it. And that's obviously what she's doing probably up at Thunder Bay right now, loading or I would assume grain. I, I don't know for sure, but I'm going to assume she's loading grain for a return voyage. Uh, we may see some more ships doing this because of the shutdown of the rail lines between uh, Vancouver, British Columbia and Manitoba and Saskatchewan and Central Canada, even if they get them open right now, there's going to be delays in getting those uh, uh, rail lines back up to full capacity. So again, we're seeing some really innovative methods to circumvent the backlog at LA and Long Beach. These smaller geared vessels, heavy lift vessels, we did a whole story on this with Ikea, with Home Depot, with Amazon. And again, we're seeing shippers using these innovative methods to get goods delivered and now we're seeing exporters taking advantage of, of a vessel like Happy Rover up in the Great Lakes to get some exports out. So hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please subscribe. Please hit the bell so you'll be alerted about new videos when they come in. Leave a comment, give it a thumbs up, share it across social media. And if you can, if you can, you can see how responsive I am. Please contribute to my Patreon page. That allows me to spend the time necessary to do these videos. Although this one was a pretty quick turnaround because for Charlie Brown, I, I, I would do anything for Charlie. So the, just by request, uh, I followed Charlie, Charlie and he follows me for a long time on Twitter. So until the next episode, Sal, signing off.